In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do the stepping texture hat. And this is a fabulous hat using Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to explore this amazing free pattern. It's called the Stepping Textured Hat. Look how fabulous this is. It does have a spiral look to it and it consists of three things. You have the brim, the body, and the pom-pom. So we're going to be exploring all three elements of this particular pattern and I did mine in about two hours. If you can imagine, it's one of those hot off the hook projects, nice and quick and easy. To play with today's tutorial, you just only need two balls of Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn. Today I'm going to use natural, but this was very red and I thought it was kind of fun and there is a really kind of funky um, pom-pom. I really like my pom-poms to be kind of wild idea on top so it doesn't look so store made and because I really do like the homemade look. You're also going to need an 8 millimeter size L crochet hook today. So let's explore the brim together. The brim is actually done separately and then we add the body of the hat later and then the, of course the pom-pom. So you just have to visualize the brim as like, like Karate Kid. You know, remember when he was wearing a headband? It's a very much of a band that's done separately and then we add the body of the hat afterward. Now the band is actually really neat and because we're using the back loops only, we get this fabulous stretch so that it always will stretch back to your head. It's one of those things in crochet that if some stitches is that when you go to stretch it, it'll never come back. So if you've overstretched it, you're way out of luck. But this is because it's using the back loops, you'll always have the stretch on this hat and that's what's gonna even make it more fabulous plus last a really long time. The next part of this hat, we're going to explore then the textures and you can notice that it goes up and into a spiral. It is amazing. I have to say, once you understand this pattern and you understand how the spiral is working, you are going to probably even put your instructions down because you're gonna know exactly what to do. The trick is you need to know when to stop in order to fill, uh, to do the final part of the top of the hat. But you can see it's actually really easy and we're just working with front posts and back posts, double crochet in order to make this work. The last part of this tutorial, we're going to explore the pom-pom and we're going to be doing a lot of great things with it. Now you'll notice that my pom-pom is pretty crazy. It's not uh, nicely manicured like the one in the model. I just think if it's homemade, why make it so manicured? I want to be proud that it is homemade so I just don't want people to think that I bought it in the store because when they compliment me at the, the, the coffee shop, I'm going to say, I made it myself. So uh, there's one of those things, if you want homemade, uh, you know, the having stuff that looks kind of crazy crazy um, at the end is actually part of the charm of a hat. We can't forget that as a crocheter too. So without further ado, let's explore how to do the brim and then we'll get started on the body of the hat after that. Today's pattern consists of a free diagram that you can see right here. But when we're doing the brim, you don't even need to pay attention to this. This is for the actual top of the hat once you get beyond the brim and then we're gonna be exploring. Now you're, when you go to print yours out, it will not be highlighted just like you see it on the screen here. My, I did that for myself to show how it's doing the texture or look. You can obviously grab a highlighter or a special color pencil or something in order to highlight it for you if that makes sense for you. For me, this totally makes sense. So what we're going to do is that we're going to explore this diagram but we don't need to see it right now because we're going to explore the, the brim first. So here is the yarn and I'm going to start off with the slip knot and it says to chain seven. So you're going to flip out at the next part of the instructions but you have to trust me because I flipped out and then I realized I shouldn't have. <laughs> you know how dramatic I can be. So we have uh, one on the hook. This doesn't count as one and so it says we want to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is the funny thing about it. When I saw this, it says slip stitch in each of the stitches going back. So from the second from the hook, we slip stitch. And you're thinking to yourself, Mikey, stitch, uh, slip stitching doesn't really take that much um, height. It's gonna take forever to get around the brim. But because this is chunky yarn, this goes a lot more quicker than you realize and thank goodness for that. So second chain from the hook, just turn it around, get that back hump only and just insert your hook in grab your yarn and pull through and through. So we're just gonna slip stitch, okay? So right here, slip stitch the next one and go all the way back. Now because we went second chain from the hook, there will only be six stitches going across. So that was three. You don't really need to count it. The height, oh sorry, the height of the brim doesn't really impact the, the actual stitches of the hook as well. Or the stitches, or the stitches of the hat. So one, two, three, four, five. I got one more to go. So just going in just like this. 
So then, so once we get here, we're gonna finish and let's turn this project around and start making the brim. So we're gonna turn this around and the really cool effect on what you're seeing on the hat is achieved by using the back loops only. So when you look at uh, crochet you see that there's two strings one and two. The one that's closest to you, so both of them equal one stitch but if you just went into the first one that would be the front loop and if you went into the back one it would be the back loop. So what we need to do for this entire project is that we come into the very starting and we go into the back loop only and we're gonna slip stitch our way across on the back loops only. And that's how we're gonna do this entire brim. So one, okay, so going into the next one again back loop only. And this is going to train you to be easy on those back, on the slip stitching. If you're tight on your tension, especially with slip stitching, it can be your worst nightmare. But this is actually a good um, training video or a training project in order for you to get the actual correct um, um, tension. Okay, so you wanna come all the way back across. Again the back loops including the back loop on the very end as well. I just wanna count my stitches to make sure that I'm okay. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five. So the very last one again back loop of the last stitch pull through and through. So now you're gonna turn your project. Don't worry how it looks right now because it doesn't always make sense in the way things look. You're going to chain one first and again back loop only on the first one and then just slip stitch across. So because this is a big hook, it's a big yarn, the slip stitching actually fills in really nicely and provides a really nice tight um, um, brim. Now because it is slip stitching on the back loops only, you're gonna have some stretching to it. So this hat is like, you know, usually with crochet, if you stretch it, it doesn't retain, uh, retain it some, um, it doesn't come back, it always just stays out. But because you're using the back um, loops only, is that you're always going to have the stretching available to you. So you just turn your work and continue to go in the back loops only. So you can either go as per the pattern to 21 inches for a complete length of this whole par part or you can just keep measuring it around your head and just have it snug on your head but not like overly stretching it. Okay so if you're overly stretching it it's gonna not look good and it's gonna be too tight for you. So just have it nice and snug but uh, just watch that. So continue to go back and forth back loops only with slip stitching and I'll see you back here when I get this done. And do you see the nice look that it's done? It's excellent. Okay so I'm back in about a half hour of real time has gone by and I've done the entire brim and it fits around my head and I'm really happy with it. So now that I got the size that I want you can either do the 21 inches that it requires or you can just kind of customize it for your own head. So now what we want to do is that we don't want to fasten off. We want to carry this yarn. We're not going to fasten off at all and simply just take it and just kind of fold it so it's kind of together. Not kind of, so that it is together. Okay and so we don't want this any weird twist so make sure that it is a brim of a hat. <laughs> so what we're going to do is that we're just going to take this yarn where it is right now and we're going to insert it into the back loop of the next one and pull through and through like so. So let's go through the back loop of the next stitch that's available to you right here and we go into the back loop of the, of the other one on the other side. So this is creating a seam. Now the nice thing about this particular design is that uh, because you're doing this is that the seam will always have to be at the back of the hat too. So it's kinda neat. So we just wanna continue to match the two together. So you are looking at the good side of the project at this time if somebody asks you. And so by doing this uh, particular slip stitching all the way down you're matching exactly what the stitches look like so you won't really see it at all. At least I couldn't find it on mine unless I really really look. Okay once you get all the way down to the bottom okay you're just gonna do your very last one and we are going to uh, review the pattern. I'm gonna take up to show you the diagram because that's the next part of this tutorial. So now I've just slip stitched all the way down through and so on the grand scheme of things you don't really see it unless I tell you to look for it um, but it's actually looking really good at this point. So let's uh, pull up the diagram and let's review. 
So now that your brim is complete we're ready to go but here's the diagram. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start off with double crochets that go along the top of the, the brim. Okay so we did not fasten off your yarn and we're gonna go all the way around. So I told you that I measured it around my head and that it fit. But what happens when we have different head sizes and you try to customize it for your own head. So here's the trick. The pattern consists of five stitches in order to make the textured work. Do you see how it's going up on an angle just like this? Well the trick is is that if you have a different size head other than the average size head that's in the pattern then you can actually customize the pattern in order to work for you. Sorry I'm kind of giggling here. <laughs> so if you have a, a different size head than what the model has then you can actually just customize it really easily. The trick is is that you have to keep it in sets of five. So if you keep it in sets of five even no matter what size head you got you're always gonna be successful with this particular pattern. Now what we have here is that you see that there's chain threes that work up into the rows just like you see there. Well those are building chains. Those are not counted as any one of the, the stitches at all. So what I'm going to show you in the next part of this tutorial is that I'm going to show you how to keep it in sets of five and then you're going to be able to make this hat work for you no matter what size head you have. So let's do that next. So let's begin and you can see this is the brim of the hat. So as I promised <laughs> you can customize this hat for you. So just chain up three. This is a building chain. That's what I'm gonna call it. You can call it anything that you want. That's what I'm gonna call it. So it doesn't count as any one of these stitches. So what I want you to do is that we had uh, slip stitching to make the brim. But when you slip stitch across it's like a half a size of a single crochet. So I think that if you actually just go into every one of these uh, um, ribs that you see just once into each it actually equals a single crochet if that makes any sense and it really does make sense. So you just gotta bear with me. So we're just gonna double crochet and we're just gonna slam our hook into uh, a stitch. Okay so we're just gonna just go into a spot and commit to it. So if you go into the spot on this particular um, ridge then you're gonna go into the same spot. Now this is gonna be a little bit tight nothing wrong with that and uh, you can just get your hook in there and just work it out. It, you do want it tight. You don't want this uh, particular part of the hat to be sloppy. <laughs> Nobody likes a sloppy hat. <laughs> so what we're going to do is that I just committed that I'm just going to be on the top of the, the rib. So that was one and I want to count the five. So you have to use five fingers for that. So just wrap the hook and go into the, to the ridge just like you see. So I'm go I went right into the middle of the next one. So that was two. I know. Do you feel an episode of Sesame Street coming on? You might. So let's go into the next one. Again it's a ridge. Yeah. I'm getting it. That's fine. And now we're gonna go in for another one. The next one for four. And then we're gonna do another one for five. So, so I want you to go all the way to around the brim keeping it in groups of five and at the end I'm gonna show you how to be able to add or subtract stitches in order to keep it in groups of five. So just keep going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five and then I'll meet you back at the end and I'll show you how to be able to manipulate it in order to keep the pattern consistent for you. So as promised I've come all the way back around and my next stitch is 40 but look at this. I actually have two stitches left. So what I can do to manipulate this pattern for me is that I can do a two together. So I could just go into the one stitch and pull through and pull through two and hold and then go into the next one go through pull through two and hold and then I can make that one uh, those two stitches into one and it actually makes a lot of sense if you can do that and then I just join to the top of the chain three. The chain three never counts as any one of these stitches but er, it comes together just like so. So for example say you came around and say you had three stitches left that you had to do in order to keep it in the sets of five. What I would have done is that I would have double crocheted into the three but I would have I'd slammed in two extra stitches somewhere in the last section here in order to make it work because that's what I did here with the hat and you really cannot tell that I did that. So in this part of the tutorial for right at the brim you can actually do a great job of faking it in order to get the pattern to work for you in order to make it really kind of consistent. So that's a really kind of a cool tip. So let's move along. We're going to uh, dissect some of the diagram now and I'm gonna show you how to play with some of the back loops or sorry the back posts and the front posts next. We're gonna start doing round number two and we're now going to start doing the front posts and the back posts in order to create this this lines just like you see. You see nice beautiful texture just like this. Isn't that fabulous? And basically I took a highlighter and just highlighted it so it's very clear to me what I need to do. It's easier to follow it, follow it off camera anyway that you can't see. But you can do this with the pattern too in order for you to be really kind of successful. So what we're going to do is that the first three stitches are gonna be front post double crochet and then the next two are 
back post double crochet and then there's gonna be three front post double crochet and then two back post double crochet. So because what's three plus two? That's in your five. So I told you to keep it in sets of five or groups of five when we were just doing what we're doing and because of that the next round will always work out because you've been keeping them in groups of five. So this basically round number one that we've already done if you got that and you were successful with that the rest of this pattern is gonna whip off really amazingly amazingly in your hand and you're going to love this pattern because it's gonna be very very easy to follow. So let's move on to round number two next. Let's move on to round number two and remember what I said the chain three never counts as a stitch within this entire project. It's a building chain and that's what I'm gonna call it and that's what I'm gonna refer to it from the rest of on. So if I'm saying a building chain exactly that's what it is. It's just a building chain. Please do not count it as a stitch. Let's chain three now. So one, two and three and as per the diagram it said to do three front post double crochet and then two back post double crochet. So what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna get the first stitch so don't count this chain three as anything and just front post double crochet into the next three. So one, uh, 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 two and three. Okay, there we go. And remember if you're ever looking for crochet tutorial tips on different stitches of course we have those here on our YouTube channel as well. And the next two are back posts so we're gonna wrap the hook and go into the back post for the next two back post double crochet I should say. And we're gonna do that. So that's the repeat pattern for this entire round and you are going to continue to do that. So let's just review that one more time. So we're going to do front, uh, front post double crochet for the next three. So one, two <laughs> and three and then we're gonna go for the back post double crochet for two and I want you to continue that same pattern and going all the way around and when I come back we'll just uh, show you where to uh, fasten off with the slip stitch or <laughs> where to join with the slip stitch and then we're gonna move on and then we're gonna start seeing the spiral effect um, taking effect on the project as well. So continue that and I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm finishing up round number two and there will be finishing up with two back post double crochet and then we're just going to join it to the top of the chain three. So at this point I need you to review this particular row. You need to make sure that there is two back post double crochet and then three front post double crochet evenly all the way around. This round here if you mess this up the rest of your pattern will not be consistent. So it's really critical at this point that this part of your hat will actually be done properly because all of the texture now starts revolving in more of a spiral effect uh, once you go beyond this row. So let's move on to round number three. Round number three remember we're doing the building chain. We've already discussed that. So it's just a chain three. So this time what we're going to do is that we're going to shift all of the stitches towards this hand that you see here. Okay, right here. And uh, basically I'm having you shift over by one. So basically you're always gonna have a group of five stitches. There's always gonna be three front post double crochet and there's always gonna be two. So if you're gonna shift over by one it means that the very first one will be a back post double crochet and if you look at the pattern that's true too. So the first one is a back post double crochet and if you can understand how it's shifting over by one the rest of this pattern will totally make sense to you because you're, you're seeing how it's coming together. So the next three will be a front post double crochet. So that is number two of the three. So the third one right here is actually in the back right now but we're gonna go forward so we're just gonna use this as a front post this time to pull it forward and this is what creates that spiraling effect of the textures. The next two are gonna be back post double crochet so the one is already in the back okay which makes sense because we've only shifted over by one and there was two in a row and the next one here you see it's in the front but this time it's gonna be in the back because we've shifted over by one. So let's review that one more time. So we're going to go the next three are front post double crochet. So that was two and uh, going for the third. So the third one is in the back section here but we're gonna pull it forward this time because it's gonna be a front this time and then the next two are back post double crochet. So I want you to continue to keep that patterning going the same all the way around and when we come back we'll do the slip stitch and then move you on to round number 
So I'm finishing up round number three and we wanna keep the pattern inconsistent. So the next one, I got two stitches left. So the next one is just a front post double crochet and the final is just one back, uh, back post double crochet. So the last uh, uh, round we had, round number two, we, ha we ended with two back uh, post double crochet. Well this time it's only one because everything is shifting over. So if you can understand that you can actually kind of figure out how to change things if you really really wanted to. So once you have that done you're just gonna join to the top of the chain three with a slip stitch just like that and then you can move on. So let's begin round number four next. So let's begin round number four. Round number four let's start on our building chains just like so and again everything is shifting over by one. So the first two are gonna be a back post double crochet and if you look at the pattern you will totally agree with that as well. So you can really kind of see. So you do really have to keep an eye on your row counts in order to have the hat sized properly for you but in this process right now you're just more paying attention to where the texture is and how to match it. So the next three because we've just done two back post double crochet, the next three are gonna be front post double crochet. Okay, so the next one, there's one more and it's in the back right now but we're gonna pull it forward and that creates that shifting look and then the next two are back post double crochet. Okay, so continue that same patterning going all the way around just with three front post double crochet next and then two back post double crochet after that and I'll see you back and we'll finish up round number four together. So I'm finishing up round number four and round number four will then have three front post double crochets as my final which makes sense because the first two that we started with were back post double crochet. So do you see that? So this is the building chain. We're just gonna join to the top of that with a slip stitch and move on to round number five. Round number five we're going to start off by chaining three. This is the building chain and so we have two back post double crochet and three front post double crochet here and we're shifting over by one. So this means the first one is gonna be a front post double crochet this time and that's what it says in the pattern as well and then the next two are back post double crochet. Okay so these are back post double crochet for these two. And then the next three are front post double crochets. One, two, and the third one is the one in the back here. It's coming forward this time. And then the next two are back posts. So continue that same pattern and going all the way around for round number five. Coming up to the end of round number five, you only have two stitches left and those are two, uh, one front post double crochet into each of those two. And that makes sense because we started off with just one on the other side before going into two back posts over here. Let's just join it again to the top of the chain three and let's move on to round number six. So round number six is gonna start off with chaining a three and again we look at the pattern and it has actually, we have two uh, front post double crochet to go in because we only have one right now and we're shifting over. So the front, our first two are gonna be front post double crochet only. And then the next two are back post double crochet. And I wanna explain something in just a moment here. I just wanna get beyond this step. So two back post double crochet. So then you continue to repeat that patterning of front post double crochet for three and then two back post double crochet. So in the pattern that we have is that I wanna show you something so in the pattern today that we have repeats round from two all the way to six. So we have to do two again all the way to number six. Number six we have to finish off like this in order to do the top. So one, two and three is the top of the finishing of the hat. So there's only three uh, rounds to do in order to do the closure of the top of the hat. So once we get beyond this level six we need to go all the way back to two and I'm gonna have you do two to six all the way again. You can either reverse the video or just look at the patterning and just do it again and then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna do the top of the hat. So at this time just continue to go around. I'll show you how to slip stitch again and then you can repeat from two to six on your own. So I'm just finishing up round number six and I'm continuing the pattern as normal and I'm finishing off with one front post double crochet and just this is the last one right here and that makes sense because the first two in the, and when we started were front post double crochet over here. So um, we're gonna just join with a slip stitch. So I need you to go back to round number two and do round number two to six one more time and then we're gonna come back and then we're going to do um, rounds number one, two and three for the top of the hat after that. 
So now I've repeated all the way from two to six one more time and so now I have the whole length and now it's just three more rounds in order for me to finish off. To be quite transparent with you I do have some loose ends here and I just changed my yarn ball over and uh, that's why you see that. So you probably will not have that. I, I cut my yarn so I had that. So I'm going to start off and we're gonna start off uh, just I'm just joining it right now. That doesn't include it in the tutorial. So let's start off with round number one of the closure and there's three rounds all together. The top of the hat consists of keeping that spiraling effect continuing but we're actually gonna start removing out some stitches every now and then in order to create that top of the hat. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start off by chaining a three. So one, two and three. That's your building chains as normal and the first three are going to be a front post double crochet. So you right now you have two in there from round number six. So we're gonna uh, put in or there's gonna be three this time to keep that spiraling moving. So one, two and three. And in this particular one we want to skip the next back post double crochet and we want to do um, a back post double crochet around the next one. Okay so we're gonna skip this one right here. Okay and just go the second one over. So we're gonna be eliminating out a stitch. Okay so here's the repeat pattern. So the next three are going to be front post double crochet. One, two, and three. We skip the next stitch which is a back post and we back post the second one over. Okay so continue that same pattern and going all the way around. Let's review one more time. So we just finished a back post so the next one is uh, three front post double crochet in a row. Okay we skip the next one which is a back post and we back post the second one over. So this is the very last time we're ever gonna do back posts in this entire project in this particular round. So continue that same thing going all the way around. So I'm continuing that same patterning going all the way around and I just wanna be just matching exactly what I'm supposed to do here. Okay so I'm just finishing up three uh, front post double crochets and then I'm skipping one and then I'm back post crocheting in the other. So this loose end don't worry about it. You will not probably have that on yours. Okay and now I've just back so I've skipped one I'm back post double crochet on the next one and then here is the chain three and we're just gonna join it to the top of chain three. So that concludes round number one and you can see that it's actually come more narrow now. It's uh, kind of subtle at this point but now that you've eliminated a stitch it's gonna get faster and faster. Let's move on to round number two of the final. So round number two is very very easy. We're just gonna do our chain three, our building chains and then basically every front post double crochet is gonna get a front post double crochet and we're gonna skip over the back post double crochets this time. So this uh, front post double crochet into the next three. So this allows the pattern to maintain its own self. Okay and we're gonna skip over the back post double crochet and just immediately just front post double crochet the next three front post double crochets and continue to do that all the way around. So that's a very easy round. When you come back around the very last uh, back post double crochet you are skipping over so you're just gonna once you get your last three in there you're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So that was round number two. So now it's even more narrower at the top just like you see here. So let's move on to the final round and then we're gonna be playing with uh, finishing this off and then doing the pom pom next. Let's do the final round. We're gonna chain up three, one, two and three and we're gonna front post double crochet the first two front post double crochets here and then we're going to skip over the next one. Okay so we're gonna skip over the next one and jump to the next. So, so they're kind of in groups of three already and so you're kind of skipping the last one of the group of three for each one. Okay so once you get two in there skip and then here's your next group of three. So you're only doing the first two only. Okay continue that all the way around. When you get all the way back around you're skipping the last front post double crochet because you've already got the two in there and you're just gonna join it at the top of the chain three. So that concludes on the actual written instructions and you'll notice that you'll have a hole in the top. So what I want you to do is cut about a two foot string or strand with the yarn at this point and get a darning needle and just pull this through. So pull that strand all the way through and then we're gonna be right back and I'm gonna show you how to close this off properly. So the next part of this tutorial is that I want you to put that string on a really uh, wide eye darning needle 
and get all of the plies through it just like so. And what I want to do is that I want to go in a clockwise promotion. So if you're left handed you'll go in a counterclockwise uh, thing and I want you to just slip your hook or your needle through some stitches. So you're basically just going going through almost every stitch like so. And what we're doing here is that we're gonna just do like a clothesline and pull it tight and it will close off the top of the hat. Okay so once I get all of them done I'm just gonna pull and have the whole interior. See and pull it shut. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the needle across the way. So directly across. I'm not going to worry about that and then I'm going to just come back in just a little bit over and go across again and then just again back in. So I kind of go across three times and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to tie it. So I'm just going to go in and insert underneath the hook or under the needle or needle and do it a couple times. And what I want to do is put the needle down through the center and just turn uh, come make sure it comes inside the hat. So you can see all the joining of the yarns that I did in the pattern. Okay so I'm coming inside and what I want to do is I want to tie it. So I just want to go under a few fibers on the inside of the hat and tie it off. And then just at the very end I just go in and I just weave it in a few extra more fibers and then I can safely trim that and I know it will never come out. I can also trim off my other yarns that I've also been carrying through every time I've changed yarns. Okay so now we have to move to the pom pom so this is what the hat looks like right now without the pom pom. I just think the pom pom is a really nice final touch. Okay, you can kind of really see the texture, but let's do a pom pom next. Play with. So what I want to do as per the pattern is that I want to hold out my hand like so and I want to wrap kind of loosely. Don't uh, take any pressure out of your hands and just loosely and count to 100. So this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So just continue to wrap your hand. Just kind of use this part of your hand this whole section right there and just continue to wrap until you get to 100 and then I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So now I have 100 revolutions on my hand and I wanna take the scissors and I wanna cut. So I don't wanna remove it off my hand yet and I wanna just take this yarn and just cut it like so. And I want to just take this yarn and just cut a, a, cut a generous length. Okay. Kind of using two hands here and just kind of pushing it around. Okay, so what I want to do at this point is that I want to carefully take it off of my hand. So I'm just gonna carefully take it. Now I'm really kind of nervous about this whole part of the tutorial and I'm just gonna rest it down like so. So I'm gonna put my yarn down just like so and it's prep, it's approximately in the middle. Okay, and I want to take this yarn and I want to just tie it. So just be very gentle about this and just pull, 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 pull. Pull, keep pulling as hard as you can without breaking this yarn. This yarn is relatively strong and then if you got a second person in the room that can put their finger down on the knot you're, you're laughing but what I did for myself is that because I'm only one person and I don't want to bug Daniel is this I actually put two strings around this so this is just one of two. Okay. So that's one of two. So I'm gonna grab this again and do a second string because the first string kind of is your determining on how tight you can possibly get it with that but with the second string you can get it even tighter. And I'm making sure all of the strands are organized so I don't have any crossovers. Okay. And then I want to take this string and I want to tie it again. 
and I find I, I can get a bit tighter with the second string. The more tighter you can get it, the more of uh, the, uh, the look of the pom pom will be. Now I originally thought 100 uh, revolutions around your hand is quite generous, but then the pom pom is pretty big. Okay, so now what I wanna do is that I wanna take my scissors, and this takes a bit of time, is that I wanna ram my scissors in all the loops. Okay, so I want to just kinda organize myself and using my scissors, just going in and just start cutting. So you're gonna have smaller strings that were in close to where your hand was and the larger strings are gonna be out toward the outside of your hand as the, as it was doing it. So you're gonna have different lengths in here. You just don't wanna make sure that there's no loop. So I just kinda like put in my scissors. If it stops it means that there's a loop for the most part. Once you get one side done just turn it over and do the other side. And again stay toward the one outside as well. So what I'm saying is don't go over here. Now I like my pom-poms, if I'm gonna have a homemade hat, I like my pom-poms to be unorganized and somewhat homemade looking. So it gives me that, you know, that there's nothing better than homemade, I'm sorry. And so I'm just looking for any loops that are not cut. And of course any uh, fibers that are really out of whack, you can trim off later. Now the larger ones are where I tied and basically you can just kind of hold it up and just kind of see what needs to be trimmed out. Just give it a good shake. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now if you do a nice tight one just like the model you'll have almost a perfect looking one because there's enough fiber to do it. Um, but I like my, my pom poms to be a pom pom so I like it nice and generous and thick just like so. So now let's attach this to the hat. So taking the long strings I want to use those as the ones that are coming through. So just sticking my hook into the inside of the hat and coming onto the outside roughly near the middle and now this hook is smaller than the one I was using so that I can get it through the stitches. So I'm gonna take um, at least two strings because I did cut with, um, I did tie it twice. So bring two strings and pull those through and I'm using my fingers now to kind of pull those remaining through and now just turn the hat and do the remaining string on the other side of the center point. So coming on to the other side over here and then that will make it position itself right into the direct center. Like so and now I'm using my hands to kind of, I got it through. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take, I'm grabbing both of them now and I'm pulling it tight. So I'm gonna take this and go toward the inside of the hat and I wanna take that string and just tie it. And I'm gonna tie it nice and tight so it's right in the direct center of the hat. I'm tying a knot. Okay, and then I can trim. If you wanna tie it again, you can. And so basically this is my hat at this point. So I have a really nice generous pom-pom on the top, just like so. And then this is my success story. So you can see I still have a little bit of yarn left over, not enough really to do much with it, um, but you can make even more stuff with it if you wanted to, if you had some extra leftover stuff in order to complete it. So this is how you would do the stepping textured hat and it's a really great free pattern as well. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as thecrochetcrowd.com.